the Spirit of the Living God, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, today's Pentecost Sunday, and we're especially looking at the Holy Spirit. Let's take a look at that in the Bible to start out. There in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost had come, they, that is the disciples, were all together in one place, and suddenly a sound came from heaven like the rush of a mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared to them tongues as a fire distributed and resting upon each one of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. So, God gave to His apostles the Holy Spirit, and He gives them to us. And today, I'd like to look with you at why. <laughs> I mean, Jesus, God gave us Jesus Christ, right? You'd think, what more can He give us than Jesus Christ, His Son? He's everything to us. And yet, God decided to give us also the Holy Spirit. In fact, Jesus says... He needed to go away for that to happen, and it's an advantage to us. Let's look at that in John chapter 16. Jesus, in his last days, uh, before he goes to the cross and dies for our sins, says this, uh, John chapter 16, verses 5 and following, he says, But now I'm going to him who sent me. But, in verse 6, But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It's to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. Do you find that amazing? If I don't go away, the Counselor will not come to you. If I go, I will send you the Counselor. Who is that? The Holy Spirit. And Jesus says, it's your advantage not to have me personally here in the flesh. It's better for you to have the Holy Spirit sent to you. Isn't that amazing? I mean, you'd think, what's better than having Jesus Christ here in the flesh with us, right? But Jesus says, it's an advantage to you. It's better for you if I go away, because then I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. And that's just so amazing to me. So let's talk about why on earth, or in heaven, <laughs> is it such an advantage to us to have the Holy Spirit even more than just Jesus here in the flesh, to have Jesus' His own Spirit with us? Well, First of all, think about this. God did not give us, when He gave us the Holy Spirit, He didn't give you a thing, okay? He didn't give us an it. He didn't give us a tool. He gave us a he. He gave us a person. He gave us a friend, and a very, very powerful friend at that, to be with us forever. And this is important because, you know, who are the people that come and knock on your door? The Jehovah's Witnesses, right? And some others, but... Jehovah's Witnesses are very wrong on this. They believe that the Holy Spirit is just an it. It's a thing. It's an impersonal force like electricity, they said. But that is so wrong, it's not even worth hardly talking about. I think of that line that Jesus says when he spoke to the Sadducees, Is this not why you're wrong? That you know neither the Scriptures nor the power of God? Because guess what? When you look at the Scriptures, the Holy Spirit whom you have, whom God has given to you, is a person. Think about the gift of that. For example, look at the things that the Holy Spirit is described as in the Bible. We'll turn over here to Ephesians first here, chapter 4. The Holy Spirit has emotions. It says here in verse 30, Paul says, And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God in whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Does electricity get grieved? Do you go over to your light switch and you're about to turn it off and it goes, Oh no, please, I beg you, I beg you, please don't turn me off. Right? I mean, the electricity does not care, it does not feel. The Holy Spirit can be grieved. The Holy Spirit rejoices. The Holy Spirit has emotions. He is a person. This is the advantage that God's given to you. Uh, his own spirit. A person. His own spirit. Also, look at this. The Holy Spirit has a will. He has makes decisions. He has desires. Look at Acts chapter 15, for example. Let's turn over there. Look there in verse 28. <laughs> it says, For it has seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, it says James. And then they list a few of the things for the Gentiles. It seemed good to the Holy Spirit and to us. 
You ever connect two wires and the two wires say, it seemed good to me that, that's ridiculous, okay? Jehovah's Witnesses, you're wrong on this. Not a thing, not an impersonal force, not a tool. A person will, desires, emotions, decisions. He also speaks. In Acts chapter 8, we read this in verse 29. It says, uh, And the Spirit said to Philip, Go up and join this chariot. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch, and then he had witnesses to him, and the guys get saved. So the Spirit said to Philip, So when God, when Jesus sends the counselor to you, this is a friend, a person, with will and emotions and decisions and judgments, who speaks. Isn't that beautiful? He speaks to you. Like he spoke to Philip, Go up and join this chariot. He's here to lead, to speak to us. He's a person. Does the Holy Spirit speak to you? Has He ever spoken to you? I know He does. He's speaking to you right now. Right? Through me. Through the preaching of the Gospel and the Word of God. You're hearing Him, not really me. Just me in a sense, but really Him. For He knows and thinks and comprehends things. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'll turn over there for a second. My voice cracks, but that doesn't mean I'm going through... Uh, Manhood, time, growing, you know, just crack sometimes. It says, For the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. He comprehends the things of God. He understands even the depths of God because it's God's own Spirit. I have a Spirit, right? I'm a body. I have a Spirit. I have a mind. God has a Spirit, and this is the Spirit who searches and understands things. He is a person. <coughs> And Jesus, in John chapter 14, even calls him a he, there in verse 26. Uh, Jesus says, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. And then over there in Acts chapter 13, he said, it says, While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me... Uh, Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called him. So, certainly he's not electricity, right? It's not like the force from Star Wars or something like that. Uh, the Holy Spirit says, I and me, and he speaks and he feels and he thinks and he comprehends and he searches and he comforts and he encourages. This, Jesus says, if I don't go away, you don't get him. I'm going to die be raised, ascend, and I'll send them to you, and they'll be in each and every one of you. Isn't it great to have such a friend as this? Yes. A person? I mean, this is the truth. This is what God has given to you. And how high of a friend is he? I mean, in life, it's not what you know, right? But it's who you know that counts, correct? <laughs> who do you know? Who is this person? How high of a person is he? The Holy Spirit. Well, who is the Holy Spirit? Think about this. The very first line of the Bible, you meet the Trinity. In the beginning, God, that's the Father, created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And who was hovering over the Spirit of over the face of the waters? The Holy Spirit. So guess what? The friend that you have right now living inside of your heart as a Christian, being born of the Holy Spirit in baptism, he was there at the beginning at the dawn of creation, you come along many years later, He's in your heart, hovering right now, <laughs> even at this very instant, over your heart, to seal you, to guard you, to be a guarantee to you of your inheritance to come, to lead you through life and to speak to you great things and encouragements. Isn't this wonderful? He was there at the very beginning. He is, who is He? He's the Spirit of the Father. For it says, again, in 1 Corinthians 2, the Spirit searches everything, even the depths of God. For what person knows a man's thoughts, except the Spirit of the man which is in him, so also no one comprehends the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. So, when God gives you the Holy Spirit, what is He giving to you? God, who is able to create everything in an instant of time with His Word, he says, my own spirit, I'm going to put inside of you. That's the gift that comes through Jesus Christ, whom God the Father, through Jesus, has sent to us. 
And it's even the Spirit of Christ. In the Romans 8, the Holy Spirit is called Christ's Spirit. But you are not of the flesh, says Paul. You're in the Spirit. If, the, in fact, the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. So who is the Holy Spirit? God's Spirit, the Father's, and Jesus' Spirit. So I, I would say I see why it's an advantage. You know, if Jesus goes away, guess what? Now His own Spirit is living inside of me and millions of other Christians. He's the one who's been active in, on earth down through the ages. How did Samson stand up there like Superman and tear the cords off of himself when the Philistines wrapped fresh bowstrings around him? By the Spirit of God. How did the prophets speak? By the Spirit of the living God. And do you know that Jesus' ministry was so powerful because of the Holy Spirit? We read there he was at Jesus' baptism, right? How did he come down? Look at the picture over there on the side. As a dove. And alighted on Jesus at his baptism. Then what did the Spirit do? It says, Jesus, uh, full uh, of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan where he's baptized and was led by the Spirit 40 days in the wilderness, tempted by the devil. So did the Spirit lead Jesus Christ in his ministry? Absolutely. Very active. Then we read in Luke 4, Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee, out of the wilderness. And what did He start doing? Signs and wonders and healings and casting out of demons. Jesus actually says, If I cast out demons by Beelzebul, by whom then do your sons cast them out? Therefore they shall be your judges. But if by the, it is by the Spirit of God that I cast out demons, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. So how did Jesus do all the things that He did? when he speaks to various princes in the, of darkness and says, come out! How do they come out? By the, what? The finger of God, which is the Spirit of God. And do you know that you have that same Spirit inside of you right now? Do you know the power that's at work inside of you? How high your friend is in high places? The, the friend that God has given to you to live with you forever? It says this, which he'll do for us, if the Spirit of Him, this is Romans 8, if the Spirit of Him, that's the Holy Spirit, who raised Christ Jesus from the dead dwells in you, He who raised Christ Jesus will give life to your mortal bodies also through His, what? Spirit which dwells in you. That means that if you have got the Holy Spirit inside of you right now, by the gift of God's grace through Jesus Christ, your mortal body, which is going to perish and go into the grave, going to be raised and glorified and empowered. And here's a wonderful thing. Whenever you hear of the Holy Spirit in the Bible, a word that's never far behind is the word power. So say power if you would. Y'all want some power in life? Which Could you do with a little more power? Anybody raise your hand? Yeah, I knew Bobby would raise her hand. She's, you know. We need to have more Lutherans raising their hands, right? But you can overcome anything in life with power. The reason we're afraid of things in life is because of a lack of power, right? I mean, if you perceive of something bigger than you coming against you, you're afraid because you perceive its power is greater than yours. But if you have a friend with you who is the Holy Spirit, who, for whom nothing is impossible, what have you left to be afraid of? Really, nothing. I mean, if you die, we just read in this verse, the Spirit that's living in you is going to raise you up. I mean, there's nothing that you need be afraid of if the Holy Spirit is your friend. And this is what the promise is at Pentecost. Peter preached at Pentecost. He said the promise. Say promise, okay? Promise. Is God ever going to break His promises? No. no. The promise is to you and to your children, to all that are far off, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to Him. And what is the promise? The promise is this. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so that is a friend who will stick closer to you than a brother. For Jesus says this in John chapter 14, I'll pray the Father and He'll give you another counselor, like me that is, to be with you for a little while. Today on Monday and Tuesday, but He'll be off on Wednesdays and Thursdays and Fridays for lunch. What does He say? To be with you Forever. 
Do you know the comfort that God has given to you right now through the Holy Spirit who's preaching to you? He's, you're hearing the Holy Spirit speak to you right now. He says, I have been promised to you by God, sent to you by Jesus, and I will be with you forever. I won't forsake you. I won't leave your side. I've been sent by God. I'm God's own spirit. And I have been called to bring you all the way to God's throne, to which you're destined. That's my job, and I won't fail you in it. This is amazing stuff. But it's really, in life, it's really not what you know, right? It's who you know. It's who you know that's important. And I shared this in times past, but I, I love this illustration. I'll share it again. <laughs> when I was a little boy and I was in Cub Scouts, Den 2, uh, Pack 70, uh, New Canaan, Connecticut, um, you know, most other Cub Scouts would um, be making cupcakes. All right? But my dad, when he was younger, he was in the Navy, and he had a friend named Jack Darby. They were both lieutenants. And my dad got out, went into the business world, and Jack stayed in the Navy uh, for his career. He ended up being command, a cap, a Commander Commodore Jack Darby in charge of all Atlantic submarines. Sink Pack Commander. If any submarine moved in the Atlantic Ocean, it was at Jack's word. Okay? It's good to have friends in high places. It's good because my dad, and, you know, while all the other guys are making cupcakes and in uh, Cub Scouts, my dad calls up his old friend Jack and says, what do you think you can do for Den 2 Pack 70? My little group of boys here. Oh, I think we can arrange something, says Jack. So, off we go onto a nuclear submarine. Then we have an F-14 flyby, low right over the deck at the, at the height of the conning tower. And I was on the bridge with the captain on the conning tower there, and I felt the roar of the engines go by in the heat, and then went shot straight up in the sky. And then we submerged and fired air out of the torpedo tubes. And then we came back after that and had some lunch with the high officers on the flagship and were shown around. While all the other Cub Scout dens are making cupcakes. Okay? In life, it's not what you know. It's who you know. And I want, I'm here to say to you today, you have a friend in very, very high places. There's no place higher than he. God's own spirit. And if you didn't have him, you'd still be back with the cupcakes of sin and under the bondage of the devil and, uh, and without power in life. But you've been set free from all those things because the Holy Spirit has been sent to you. Let's think about what the Holy Spirit's done for us as Christians, okay? Number one is he is the one who empowered people around you to preach. We read there in uh, Luke 24, Jesus says, the apostles, basically he tells them not to preach, to start out. He says, thus it is written that the Christ should suffer, and on the third day rise, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem, and your witnesses of these things. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but, watch this, he says, stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. So he says, wait with your preaching, the Holy Spirit's going to come, and then what are you going to get? Power, right? Say power again. Power. Whenever you see that word Holy Spirit, those name, his name in the Bible, power is not far behind. He empowers the preaching. He empowered them at Pentecost. He empowered the preaching of the word, and he's empowering the preaching of the word you're hearing right now. You're hearing the living Holy Spirit speak to you right now through me, empowering me to do this. And um, then we read, it's to your advantage that I go away, Jesus says. For if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. But if I go, I'll send him to you. Verse 8. And when he comes, he's going to do three things. He will convince the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. And so the Holy Spirit, when he empowers preaching, convinces us first that we're sinners. And then with respect to judgment, that judgment day is coming and that the ruler of this world, the devil, is judged. And that righteousness, that righteousness that you need for heaven is to be found only in one place, in Jesus Christ. And it comes to you as a gift by faith that you might be saved. Where would you be without the gospel and the preaching of it? The gospel is the power of God for salvation to everyone who has faith. So what's the Holy Spirit done for you already? He has put power into preachers that you might hear a word and then... 
He gives you ears to hear that word and then believe that word and so be saved. For look over there at Acts 10. Remember Cornelius. He's the first Gentile getting saved, right? Peter's preaching to him. And Peter says these wonderful words I love. To him, he says to Cornelius, to him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him and Jesus Christ <coughs> receives the forgiveness of sins through his name, through faith in his name. What do we read then? It says, And while Peter was still saying this, the Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word. And the believers from among the circumcised who came with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on the Gentiles. <coughs> so God has got to get you salvation, right? Jesus saves you, but then the Holy Spirit's got to bring you to Jesus. He preaches to you, then he puts into you faith to receive that word. That hearing it going into the ears, it might go into your heart and you might believe it. And so be saved. Oh foolish Galatians, Paul said to them, let me ask you only this. Did you receive the Spirit by works of the law or by hearing with faith? You receive the Spirit by believing in Christ and it's the Spirit who gives you the faith to believe. And you're born of Him in baptism. Born of the Spirit. And then, now that you're saved, guess what He does? He empowers you to walk in the truth of Christ. You know, the world, do you ever wonder why the world, the people who don't know Christ, who don't have the Spirit, are still walking in the blindness of unprofitable pursuits, going after the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life, and they just don't see the end of it. They don't see where it's leading them. Why? Why? Because they don't have the Spirit of God. Do you know that there are only two spirits in the world? There's a Spirit of God, and there's a Spirit of the devil. There's the Spirit of the age to come, there's the Spirit of this age. Those who don't have the Spirit of God don't see the end of their things. They don't see what you see. But God has promised you this in Ezekiel. He says, a new heart I'll give you. A, a, a new spirit I'll put within you. I'll take out of your flesh the heart of stone and I'll put into you the heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Be careful to observe my ordinances. You shall be my people and I will be your God. Isn't that fantastic? My spirit, God says, I'll pour out upon your flesh and I'll cause you to walk. Do you ever get that feeling when you're walking along in life and all of a sudden you get totally convicted when you think of doing something wrong? What, who is that? That's the Holy Spirit in you convin convincing you of that sin, saying, no, 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 this is the way, walking in here. And he's doing it so encouragingly. His word means, the paraclete, the word in the Greek, actually means encourager, comforter, counselor, uh, friend, defender. When I was in Boston with uh, Beth years ago at her, um, one of her surgeries, one of the line, one of the tube, or I should say uh, T, you know, the underground, the subway, one of the lines, the green line was closed, and we were riding at the Mass General where Beth was needing to go, and, and uh, all of a sudden it stopped and everybody got off and we were alone sitting there on the train. It was at the end of the line. We didn't know that the rest of the, that line was closed. Uh, for a time while they're working on it, but there's a man sitting there, an old man. After everybody left, he looks at us kind of strangely and goes, you must be new around here. <laughs> this line is closed and it's not going anywhere. But where are you going? We said, well, Max General, and we really don't know how to get there. He says, don't worry, I'll take you there. I'll take you there personally. In fact, he didn't leave our side, friends, until he got us all the way to where we needed to go. Isn't that amazing? This is what the Holy Spirit does to us. He says, you don't know how to get to heaven, but I've been sent here uh, for the very purpose of sticking by your side, being with you, as Jesus said, forever, to lead you all the way to where you need to get to. And God has called you and destined you to a place of great power, His very throne. You don't know how to get there, but I'll be with you. I won't leave your side. I'll bring you there personally. Isn't that amazing? Would you say that this is an advantage to us? When Jesus says he's going to send the Holy Spirit and it's going to be an advantage, is this an advantage? This is a huge advantage. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. You're not alone in that life. You don't have to figure it out. The Holy Spirit will lead you. Even if you can't always hear him out loud or, or perceive him, he's still there invisibly leading you 
For a man's mind plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. And even we, he's given us authority to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy. I mean, we have power, friends, in our lives to live the Christian life. That's God's gift at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit. A friend and a guarantee to get you where he's promised to take you. And Jesus says, and here's where we're destined. He who conquers and who keeps my works until the end, Jesus says in Revelation. I will give him what over the nations? Power. Think about this. This is God's promise to you. I will give you power over the nations. That's your destiny, okay? Power over the nations. And you shall rule them, God says, with a rod of iron, as when earthen pots are broken in pieces, even as I myself, Jesus says, receive power from my Father, and I'll give him the morning star. He was an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. So Beth and I were heading to Mass General. Where are you, where are you headed? To God's own throne, okay? When those little uh, sea turtles are born out there on the beach, are they destined to live on the beach forever? No, no they have a destiny. Where is it? The ocean. the ocean. That's their home, and they're following the light on the way there. You've got light. You've got the Holy Spirit to lead you, to guard you, to protect you from everything that would come against you, to make sure... But you get where God wants you to be. And where God wants you to be is His own throne. And that's where you're going. You're going to get there because the Holy Spirit is forever with you. He says, like on the train, I'm not leaving your side. I won't fail you. I'll forsake you. I'm personally here as your friend and spirit of power to get you there, sent by God, sent by Jesus Christ. And we'll get there. Is that not encouraging to you? Yeah. Is He encouraging you today through me? Yes. And He has one more job. I'll have many jobs, more, but here's one more I'll share with you. When the Spirit of Truth comes, Jesus says, He'll guide you into all the truth. He won't speak in His own authority, but whatever He hears, He'll speak, and He'll declare to you the things that are to come. He'll glorify me, for He will take what is mine and declare it to you. Watch this. Jesus says, All that the Father has is mine. Therefore I said to you that He'll take what is mine and declare it to you. What's God given to Jesus Christ? All things. Everything. God the Father has, He's given to His Son. And Jesus right here says, the Holy Spirit's job is to take everything that I've now been given and to declare it to God's people. That's you. Oh, what an inheritance you have. What an inheritance you have in Jesus Christ, who died for you and rose again. And the Spirit is here to make sure that you receive it. What an advantage of these. So, you can have the spirit of this age, or you can have the spirit of the age to come. We have the spirit of the age to come. And the Holy Spirit, God gives you, that your faith might not fail, your courage not fail, your strength not fail, your love not fail, until that day when you come into your full inheritance in the world to come. An advantage? Amen. Thank you, God, for your Holy Spirit. A great advantage. In Jesus' name, amen.